Okay, officially, welcome everyone to the feature match or a feature match from the I division. This is one of the first games to be played from the I1 division. T Shoff and Sibylla. I have a co cool commentator, Brepoot, here. Hello. This is the lowest league, uh, I division. So there's no demotions from this league. Um, just demo uh, promotions to H and above. Uh, and I believe this is the first feature match that we've had from from this division. Yeah, I was looking at the rebuild DZ. I wasn't too keen on that because I have a personal vendetta against rebuild, but. I'm not sure what else you do. Yeah, I mean, there's really not any other payload here that looks worth building for. And with Wolf Den, right, that discourages the building as well. So, uh, <laughs> DZ is right. Yeah, DZ. Uh, what else do people say? <laughs> DZ. DZ would be, would be the wrong thing to say, I think. <laughs> okay. We're just dash against T. I don't know if you know this, VCN or all ratings to start. Do you know what your like record is against me from just like ladder matches and, and league matches? I have no idea. Probably close to 50%. Uh, you'd think so, but no, you're 19 and 9 against me. I've, I like, I'm awful against you. Oh, okay. I was just checking my versus stats the other day and I felt like I had been bad against you and I was not wrong. Oh look, five coin for Sibylla. Let's see what they open. Okay. All right. Just open rebuild. All right. I see what you want to do. And that seems fairly defensible. Just open rebuild, start playing it, and yeah. maybe pick up some more rebuilds. We'll see how closely they play to straight sort of like two to three rebuild action here. You do have colonies, so I didn't rebuild is kind of interesting. I didn't even see the colonies. Right, well, we have a death card open on the other side, uh, which is interesting. I suppose that helps you spike like gold. It's not good for Wolf Den. No, we'll see what the plan is with the death card. I'm intrigued now. A fortunate thing, I think, with these sort of lower league matches is that we get treated to not just watching mirrors uh, nearly as much as you do in the higher divisions. Oh, definitely. Leprechaun. Leprechaun death card. So, uh, economy, not not deck control. Uh, pretty pretty clear, pretty clear signal there. Yeah, I must say, I like Sibylla's decision. This is decisions so far. The rebuild on five, no estate on two, silver on three. Yeah, it's a very reasonable... I mean, it's a perfect sort of rebuild path. Yeah. I'm interested to see how tight they stick to just playing pure rebuild. Yeah, I want to see what this Death Guard and Leprechaun does. Clear. Yeah, they okay. fail to line up the ruins. Yeah. Uh -huh. Clerk is pretty good here. I don't know about that. Against a rebuild, you just top deck the green card on the plate. Like, if you have a province, you could convert that into a colony, maybe. Yeah. It's not great. It's certainly not, not great. Because one just of the main issues it's... with rebuild is um, you draw the green card in your hand, and you don't want that. You want the rebuild to find it in the deck. Rebuild Clerk allows you to put it back in the deck. Right. Right, yeah, just having the top deck one card is generally pretty friendly, plus right, the rebuild is able to benefit from that if you do have the cards in hand. It's just nice to help you hit five while your opponent maybe doesn't as much, but we're not really seeing that. No. A second silver or two for Sibylla. They should not have problems hitting five if they continue along that path. Oh boy, this is going from bad to worse. Look at negative 20 points for Tishoff. The wolf den is yeah. really feeling it here, and yeah, that locust is just brutal to get hit by on this board. 
Yeah, I don't see another way a way to remove the curse. You'd have to buy or gain a second one to go plus one on the BP. Yeah, either that or just have it get hit by Locust again the second time around on the hex pile. I guess so, yeah. Probably a little less likely. So Tisha is struggling to hit numbers after the death card opening. But has has some golds. No has a second a gold. Leprechaun. Spiller takes the duchy. Do they take a second rebuild here? Yep. They do. So they're playing like a very competent sort of straight rebuild here. Yeah. Yeah. This is exactly what to do if you play a rebuild. Okay. Death God connects. What did you want the money for? Rebuild as well. Okay. I definitely would have preferred, I, I think at least, uh, Sort of clerk open, maybe Baron, probably clerk open to if your plan is just to buy rebuild and play rebuild. Yeah, I think so. Oh, look, the curse. The second. They curse. get to play. So now their curses are worth just negative two points <laughs> instead of one of them worth negative four. Yeah. Seven again. Where do you go with this money? Uh, gold, maybe? I mean, I think as... The, I mean, maybe you take a second rebuild. Uh, yeah, that's what they choose to do. So they each have to rebuild now, right? They do, yeah. And then Tishuf has the... Well, I guess they both have leprechauns. I guess I missed... Sibylla pick, did Sibylla pick up a leprechaun no, or does no, Tishuf have no. two? Tishuf has two, probably to counter the wolf then. And now this is a second Baron for Sibylla again to counter the wolf then, I assume. But that I assume, Baron, yeah. I, I, I mean, I understand it'll gain the estates, but you could probably buy Duchy and start one stage up the rebuild line. Yeah, I think it's pretty hard to justify the Barons. Just on these straight rebuild games, you need the Silvers. Um, are going to be better off for you than the Baron. It's so unlikely that you line them up and gain any estates. Is, you can just buy the estate when you don't hit five if you really need to. Yeah, exactly. Okay, five again for Tishoff. Rebuild or duchy? I have a feeling it might be Jester, but I don't know. Nah, nah, nah. The, the wolf then is scaring both of these players. I don't think they'll go for one Jester. See? Second so clerk. Go for the clerk. Okay, yep. If you're right to go with the wolf den line. Sure, we, they take on four here. Yeah. So they take a clerk. Okay. So Death God has removed both the ruins. That's good news for the um, wolf then points. Next time, I assume the, the wolf, the Death God will trash itself. Yeah. So that worked out not not too terribly. I guess we should talk for a moment. Like, is there an engine here? <laughs> like, like, what would you play here? Would you play rebuild or would you play? You know, Academy, Werewolf, Village, Caravan, like there's sort of all the components. I wouldn't play Rebuild, but that's because I don't like it. I would try to fight it with Academy and you would have to, the, 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 the problem is Baron. Um, The only plus buy is Baron, so that's the only tricky part in how to build, I think. But everything else is here, you have Villages with Academy, with the Blessed Village itself, you have lots of draw, Werewolf, Destria. DZ is correct, Colony is going to help me um, in beat and rebuild as well. I, so I would try the engine, but 
Yeah, I think I'd play engine here too. There's yeah. just enough, right? Colony pushes you towards it. There's enough components. Academy is really strong for reliability. And you're going to have the estates around anyway, so Baron plus buy isn't too terrible. You're going to dud some, but I think you're going to have good enough turns that it makes it worth it. Mm -hmm. And Leprechaun is there too. The wishes are nice. Plenty gain. Yeah, for possible. sure. Yeah, this dodgy pile will, will run out soon. Yeah, with four rebuilds gone, we're seeing sort of fairly, fairly straight rebuild um, type type game play out here. So T Shelf chose not to play that leprechaun. I wonder what who what hex they were worried about to not play it. Given any any of those ten, I haven't been tracking enough. I guess is it is it oh. just locust and plague that have been taken? Yeah, yeah. So now they take our blessed village. Oh, huh. I thought for sure they would play that leprechaun. Yeah, I would think the golds at this point. Yeah, you're you needed to come back. You need the golds to be able to buy province. Maybe get extremely fortunate and buy colony. Yeah, because that is the advantage Tishov has over Sybil. They have more money in the deck. Right. But certainly not not in good shapes point wise. No. But I don't think it's as bad as his score makes it look. This death guard. Should... Yeah, a lot of it's wolfed in. Yeah. Death guard should disappear here. Actually, you could. You could think about not playing the Death Guard there and maybe trying to hit Province with it on the next shuffle. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, 7 is... Right, it gets you gold or one of these 5s. It doesn't do that much for you. I could definitely see the argument for hanging onto that Death Guard and keeping it with the gold or, or 2 golds. And then you hit Colony. And yeah. you know, that's the... Right back in it. They do hit Province here, though. Mm-hmm. At minimum, could be more. Right. I would top deck that Destria and just take the province on a run. Yeah, I would do the same thing, I think. I think uh, trying to draw another gold is a table they top deck the copper. Let's see if they play the left. Because you only have one card. Yeah, yeah, you only have one card to look at because of the click. Okay, dodgy into province, yeah. And five is what? Rebuild or dodgy? I think probably Dutchy at this point, although wanting the game to end earlier, you could take Rebuild, or you could take the Wolf Den point, Clark. They don't like the Wolves at all. Yeah, yeah. I think I certainly would have taken a 5 there, um, and then just sort of worried about the Clerk later, if at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have many opportunities to miss five later on in the game. So just... Right. Or or hit five and then take take the clerk then. Yeah, exactly. They have stopped playing the leprechaun. They only took two gold from the leprechaun and then stopped. T shuff that Yeah, is. I guess they just got bad taste from but they bought two of them in order to play a total of twice. Yeah. These estates uh, might become a problem later for the rebuild. You'd have to name a state to skip over it, and then you might end up milling a colony when you don't want to. 
right? It's always, I mean, I like rebuild. I'm in like this minority of people maybe that likes rebuild games because I find like those, those, you know, when do I start slash stop buying a state and those types of decisions are, are interesting based on game state. But uh, I mean, no one, no one needs too many rebuild games. Five. Blessed Village. And my money's on Blessed Village because they only have one. Yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna argue against that. I watched them gain a will over so of the Blessed Village to completely undo the the wolf death. Oh Destria. Destria. They already had one of those, I suppose, too, right? They had two of them, yeah. They had two of them, so they have all three Destriers. I think so, I think so. These barons from Sibylla have really gotten in the way, I think, more than anything. Yeah. They do hit five with two rebuilds in hand here, so next turn will be good towards the end. Yeah, I hope the rebuild doesn't flip the deck for them, though. Yeah, they would not want to turn to this shuffle. Or if they do, they want the game to be very close to over. What do you take on six here? That's you take the Blessed Village now. I really am amazed that they've stopped playing the Leprechaun. Yeah, what? I get stopping playing the Leprechaun at some point, but Not after they too really old. no. <laughs> yeah, they were six or way seven. too early. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, like when you're not going to shuffle again, or maybe one more shuffle, like that's when you stop. But probably, you know, really the only time you stop is when you're not going to shuffle again in a game like this. Yeah. Get rebuild. Names what? Colony, yeah. Estate into duchy, okay. Do you play the rebuild here and risk? Have you been tracking your deck well enough to know what the bottom two cards are? Okay, I guess so. I can tell you, if I was playing this game, I would not have been tracking my deck. No, I to wouldn't know what the bottom either. two cards are. I would also not be aware. Tracking in a rebuild game is just—it's a little too much to ask for sometimes. Yeah. Oh, that's true, DZ. You could count like that. But then you don't you would have also have to know how much your opponent has, right? Oh no. Yeah, I think you would. I mean I at least for me the trash would be <laughs> minimally helpful if I wasn't sort of paying if I didn't know what was in my deck. And what I had gone through that turn, like by reading the log or like actually paying attention on my rebuild plays. Yeah, I would have to read the log and see what it skipped over to know. See, that province could have been a colony there. Top deck the province, flip it into a colony, or mill the province. Only two provinces left. They have a considerable lead. Yeah. No, this see, this is that, well. It certainly would have been better than this. Yeah. Yeah. They do line up Baron with an estate here, though, and hit eight. So, I mean, I don't think that had anything to do with the top deck decision. It's just what happened after the rebuild play. But, it, I mean, it, in a way, it certainly had something to do with it. Yeah, in a way. But that should probably discourage Tisha from playing too much more once they see the penultimate province leave the pile. Right, T-Shift needs to hit Colony, which is 
not looking terribly likely with this deck that has like what two golds in it and you know, a couple of rebuilds that can get four points but is you know, pretty far behind and looking pretty one for for Sybilla at this point i think yeah i don't i don't see a way out for Dishoff. they would probably have to stack the deck put all four destrias on it all the money or... yeah that would and then a rebuild at the end of it something like that yeah Another Destrier. Oh, there. there are three Destriers and a Clerk and a Fresh Shuffle, so the stack deck is in play. Hmm. Okay. 15 points off. Can you get the 15 points? I don't think they can get the 15 points. Yeah, I think it's a very, very small percentage that they could draw that. Uh, yeah, it's already gone. They could get a wish, though. It's true. It's a negative they three They may points. or may not get to play it. <laughs> exactly. Oh, the named province. Oh, that is no. Interesting, the name province. Oh, because... I don't know how that would help you. Yeah. Because you really want to trash provinces, I think, into colony. That's part of the way back. Yeah. You can't. You can't. A state to duchy doesn't do anything. Duchy to province loses. Like, that's the only thing you want to trash is your provinces. Yeah, I mean, there aren't any duchies left anyway. Things just are out of time now. Yeah, as soon as Sibylla finds a rebuild, names a state, uh, then that would that would end it. Okay, here's a rebuild. Mill and Colonies. Uh-huh. All this money and nothing to do with it. I do think T-Shift has hit seven, three, four, five times in this game. It's been a lot. Yeah. Curses and Leprechauns in the way. Now they buy a gold. when they have been refraining from playing Leprechaun. Yeah, it seems a little little afraid of the hexes, at least relative to you know being someone who bought Leprechaun. Yeah. Oh, they didn't name a state. They named Colony. They did not name a state. So yeah, that's right, that's just a missed missed win, but should be fine. Like there's really not a path back for no, T yeah. at this point. Yeah, the deficit is too large. And Maybe no... if Sybilla starts buying uniques. <laughs> yeah, I guess that is the way back. If your opponent sabotages themselves. They're buying death cards, looking for ruined market. Mm-hmm. One estate, one province. They could have bought an estate as well. On that last turn. But chose Silver. Oi, how much is this? Is this 11? This is enough for Colony, right? This is enough for Colony. Yeah. Well, that <laughs> that changes things. That's five Destriers. Yeah. And I do think that 
you know, regardless of, of sort of having not played the leprechauns, which we've talked about, you know, what wishing that he had done, I, trying to draw to hit colony here, I think, is worth doing, or at least trying to have types of cards that can help you hit colony. Yeah, look at the situation. No, 20. 35 points each, one province, one colony left. How did we get here? Yeah, lots of lots of rebuild plays and you know, not naming the thing that lets you, you know, end the game when you had the opportunity to do that, I suppose. So no. Not clear how the game's gonna end. <laughs> the wish is plus three points. It is. And you can you can gain rebuild and you just win. Wish for rebuild. If, if that's what you that's what you want to do. We'll see if T-Shuff agrees. Oh, T-Shuff is going to enjoy this commentary. I wrote him off midway through the game, you know? <laughs> oh, no, 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 not this Gains Destrier, <laughs> but, but draws rebuild. <laughs> okay. I assume that they're going to name something that lets them win here, which would just be a state. I don't think they have any estates. Okay, so as long as they don't... So, like, anything works, then. I assume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take colony. My word. I'm gonna stop talking too early. <laughs> yeah. You never know. You never know when someone will just hit 11. Because in your defensible, it did have... Did have a win in hand. It was difficult to predict wouldn't result in a win. Yeah. So that's one for T Shelf coming back from the brink. Oh, I was wrong. Sibylla had one Destria and one colony. Huh. It's surprising Sibylla didn't get more colonies. Yeah. Well, not rebuild. Cool, cool. Huh. Expander and monument. It's sort of a standard engine board, but right, your only gains are expand, um, which is a little bit, a little bit awkward to be using as your source of gains. No, bandit camp gains too. Wait, I don't. Know, I think it's just a speed right. thing. Like, how quickly can you mill through the provinces with expand while having a lead? Yeah, given the lack of gains, you might not have time to really... Well, you definitely don't have time to build too much. I guess the question is, do you try to draw deck here, or do you just um, play like an expand bounty hunter money-ish mill thing? No, I think you try to draw bandit cam. Smith Plaza is nice here, actually. You can get one plaza Plaza's fairly. Plaza's great. Yeah. All the villages are good. Plaza, Bandicam, Fishing Village. Yeah, plenty of choices. Just you can only add you can only add one a turn until you uh, get the expand in your deck. Uh, but then you can add Fishing Village, which is plenty good. Yeah, T Shuffles with Silver. I would have gone Fishing Village. Bounty Hunter, yeah, makes sense. Good top deck the Bounty Hunter too with the Astrologers. Yeah, the bounty hunter definitely makes sense. And I like the fishing village too, because you're perfectly fine hitting four here on your second shuffle. That's good. And even three is just fine. Yeah. The silver almost paid off though for T Shuffle. Look at this. One more copper and that's a that's an expand. Yeah. Hitting hitting seven on turn three would be pretty sweet. Yeah. They kind of enhance that silver to a gold. Okay. 
but I don't I don't hate the gold here early. You know, it helps you get towards that expand, which is a you know, really key card here. Yeah. Uh, Silver off a of civil on also they have one each on those five. These are good draws for Tisha. <laughs> Effectively five, six, five five. Yeah, that's bandit camp journey man. I mean, here I would expect bandit camp, not the journey one. Yeah, I think that would be the build order, right? Take the thing that gives you economy, and the journeyman doesn't really do much for you in this next shuffle. Well, hold on. Do they? Oh, it's just the bounty hunter. Nah, they could play with the journeyman. Play a little risky. You could, you could do that, and that would get you to the expand. Um, here's an expand, right? No, it, here's our gold. Gold. Yeah, I think. Uh... I think expand looks, I mean, right, that, that's really what you want to be playing with here if you're going engine, but with the gold it signals, right, just playing more money-like and um, just trying to trying to hit eight here rather than expand things into engine components. Mm -hmm. Another opportunity to expand. Smithy for yeah, we'll see like, if okay, takes expand. it, they do. Very nice, very nice. I like it a lot. Sibylla and they get to hit four here too. Or hit five. He should have hit five again and expand something. It's really good. Yeah. Well, they hit four and expand. I think you Oh, four, right. I was right the first time. Yeah. Is either Fishing Village or Grotto? Grotto is so good. I don't understand how they printed Grotto and made it cost only $2. <laughs> It's like it's kind of like chapel in a lot of ways. It's yeah. like it's not quite chapel, of course, but no. it's it's you know it's like the next best thing. Do you think the fishing village? I like the fishing village. Yeah, um, yeah. she's you're you're limited enough on gains, and the reliability is nice, and then you can just start shoving smithies into your deck. Yeah, just do it, do it, bandit camp. The decks are starting to look quite similar now. Second expand. With seven again, I definitely don't mind the second expand too much here. Nah, the second expand is great. Did you have much? You really don't need. Huh? You go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. I was just... It wasn't anything important. I was just say you really don't need any uh, like treasure payload here at all. You just play with like two bandit camps, two fishing villages, and there you go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If you could sneak a monument in there too, that would be might give you a decisive edge, maybe. Yeah, the points are nice if you can find the time to 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 add that in. But I don't think you have the time. The poor bounty hunter, what, what wasn't finished working. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Bounty Hunter had a lot more work to do there. Yeah, why why take a gold in your why take a spoils in your next shuffle and every shuffle out thereafter and you can just take a gold instead? Yeah. They each have the one smithy. Tishoff is considering province. Yeah, okay, I didn't think so. Okay. I'm a big fan of using Bounty Hunter as like primary economy and just exiling things that you plan on regaining. Yeah, I underplay that part of Bounty Hunter. I for sure. I, I I'm too attached to my things that I buy. You get them right back. It's just, you know, you're just putting them put them in exile. Not too long. Hopefully, hopefully that same turn. But it's that it's not great. But I just like I like doing it when I when the opportunity presents itself. Yeah. Yeah. More gold for Sibylla. So I think that is three gold for them against one gold for Tishov. Tishov just picked up our Journeyman, which is very good, I would say. 
And again, they have an opportunity for a second expand here. Or for more draw. Yeah, T-Shift's definitely playing with more of the kingdom, less gold. Oh, but... commentator's curse. <laughs> commentator's curse, indeed. Huh? Why? Why is Efficient Village a mule? Um, I, I guess it puts it in the next shuffle. Um, yeah, I don't know. About that. You'd prefer to have it as the duration, right? Uh, yeah, I think so. A free coin at the start of your next turn and two actions. Yeah, I think it's probably just about exclusively better to to play it as fishing village i could i could i could try to rack my brain harder for for where mule would be actually better but i think it would take extraordinary circumstance mm -hmm. they had eight here if they want to go will. ahead and take province I, Tisha. Think they will. I would here yeah, as well i would too and I would have taken a journey monday instead of the bandit camps because that's I think that's all the pieces you really need. Yeah, they have a lot of villages, so adding more draw would be would be worthwhile. But you just want to be drawing and playing your expands. And if you draw your right, sort of like we said, you're you're gonna hit eight if you draw. Yeah, definitely. Especially with Bounty Hunter to help out. T Shuff still has theirs. Right. All right, second so expand I could live with as well. With that, I would prefer, you know, if it, uh, earlier expand over a gold and not have a gold and just take province mm -hmm. there, probably, but. 100%, 100%. Because here, I wonder if Sibylla will follow on the second expand or not. Didn't expand their state. This suggests province here. If they want to keep points here, yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, certainly, certainly suggest it's time to light green cards. Yeah. Do you anyone skip copper? Skip curse. Interesting. Oh, I didn't even just... notice. Saying yeah, wanna wanna keep the coppers more than the other cards, I guess. Well, curse says I'm okay with the next three cards of my deck. I don't know about that. It, yeah, they could have named a state if they actually wanted to strip things that wouldn't be meaningful to them. True. They still have two of those around. But they had the expanded hand from the beginning, right? So maybe they were okay with drawing an estate. Oh, wait, where are the two points uh, in exile? No, they revealed it. It was in the journeyman draw. Oh, okay. No, the two estates are in exile. That's the two points for t -shelf. They don't have any estates in the deck. Oh, uh, okay. So, yeah, you would think name Copper there? Yeah, you know, try to fish out. What is this? What is this? Let the bounty hunter put things away for you, please. They can take two provinces here if they if they would like. I I would like to do that at this point. You're just this type of board. You just want to have the provinces. Looks like they uh, do. Yeah. Yeah, that's quite a strong position. It is wow. they can even expand that bandit camp. Mm -hmm. uh, Sibylla hits seven is an awful number to hit well, in this they, type of situation. They could have enhanced but the you can goal take an there. expand. Oh yeah. I think that probably makes sense to do at that game state. Maybe it might be too early, I'm not sure. It certainly would have been right in this shuffle that we mm -hmm. have now, but going into the next shuffle, yes, yeah, it's, it's questionable. That's that's my only reservation. I might have still done it and hope that things would work out for me. Yeah, I'd be doing a lot of hoping here. Yeah, 
We do expand the bandit camp. That that seems right. Monument. Okay. Definitely late for the monument, but I assume it's a reasonable buy on on four. I I, I think plaza and smithy would be better. Yeah, I I would agree with that. And even like bounty hunter, I think I'd prefer. So now the estate gets trashed into a bandit camp, not before. A little inconsistent. Here you bandit camp doesn't do a lot for you at this point. No, no. I mean, it's an expand target, I guess. This is province again, the t -shirt. Yep. Yeah, with a monument place. A pretty commanding lead for T-Shift, really. Actually, that's a bit unfortunate to see the journey man there. Yeah, yeah, you'd prefer to keep that around. Maybe Are you to put a fishing village down? Yeah. I wonder if Tishov could double province on this next hand. We haven't seen the gold yet, right? And they have one more? I think they have gold expand down there. I'm not sure. Yeah, look at this. This is double province. Clean double province too, not even Miller. Where's the... Uh, it's clean if you would expand... Expand, expand into How province. How is it clean? And then enhance gold into province. You have the extra money from the fish and village. Ah, uh, right. Enhance with the three. Yep. If that do it. I mean, you could also expand province into province, expand gold into province, kill the game. Yeah, melon would work just fine. So we'll see if they if they do that. Yep. They do take telling the the enhanced line is definitely more stylish, but this works just fine. Yeah, the enhanced line is six more points. Should you need it. Well, five more if you buy the estate here. Well, that's two games to teach off. Yeah. Had to come from behind in the first one, and then... Yeah, well, this one, they picked yeah, up play. the expand first, so I think that's fair. Yeah, they played with more of the board, picked up the expand first, played with more of the draw cards. Um, it was, I think, a, a fairly deserved win in the second one here. Did you read the fun facts about both of these players? I did. Yeah, did you? Yeah, I'm just going through them now. t is from the Minneapolis area. And Bruce Bear professionally for his career. But they've won local, national, and international awards for my bear. What? I enjoy playing disc golf and playing music. And Dominion is more of a winter activity for him. Because he coaches his daughter's softball team in the summertime and enjoys the outdoors too much. Alright. We have to find out about these bears though. If we have somebody in the community who could, you know... Sponsor rounds of internationally acclaimed bears. That would be nice. I don't know. I don't know much about beer generally, um, but uh, I mean that sounds that sounds fairly impressive. It makes sense that someone living in Minneapolis would be more interested in Dominion only in the winter months when it's colder than Iceland. <laughs> Instead of never even tried beer. <laughs> What is a bear? How cold does Minneapolis get? 
uh like extremely for like five months in a row um like it really it's colder than iceland um like on average it's extremely cold is it colder than canada i've been in canada for a while depends on the part if you're in like north central canada then no if you're in like vancouver then like yeah it gets way colder no not vancouver i was in ontario gotcha yeah it's probably and i don't know it's all it's all cold <laughs> It's all too cold. That's how I see it too, honestly. Right now, I'm I'm in the Caribbean, and I look at the weather every day and laugh. Not me and minus. Oh, that's nice. Is it cooler yeah, I mean, than Antarctica? Uh... I don't know. I don't know. That's I don't have that much knowledge. Yeah. What happens in Antarctica? I don't know. Penguins? I think it is penguins. Because I did learn that polar bears don't eat penguins because polar bears are on the North Pole and penguins are on the South Pole. That's something I learned in like the last week. I'm very oh. smart. Okay, I, I didn't even There's know a board here. <laughs> All right, Stranger Sun says, Reckless Soothsayer seems very cool. On first glance, I'm very uncool on second glance. Why uncool on second glance? Because you lose the suit sale, you have to buy it back. You get two golds. That's all you need. <laughs> yeah, T Shuff clearly proved that in the first game. All you need is two gold. In fact, in the second game, they probably only had two gold as well. That's it. Two is the magic number. Yeah, two gold. There's definitely like, there's a huge Garrison Hillfort thing here if you want to do that. There's Nobles Village, it's like pretty awkward. There's like tons of support. That's it's not great. Uh, I don't. I would be fairly confused here if I was playing this as far as what I'd really want to do and what the build order would be. I would jam my opponent with as much suits as as possible and then depending on the curse split decide whether to go more money or try to build something with nobles and catacombs or something because you could get some reliability with the border guards many many border guards will pick out the good cards from your deck let you play it this place will clean up a little bit you have the haven to help smooth things out I guess that means you buy, well, you try to buy three Soothsayers, play, <laughs> play them three times, so you win the curse split 6-4, and then that lets you... Yeah, like sort of what Stranger Sun is playing, saying. Um, yeah, yeah just, just try to win that curse split, which will always be one. All right, let's see what they get up to. I assume they both will go after the Soothsayer. I don't see a line... That doesn't involve suits they are really. Yeah. The only question is, do you, right, as, as we're seeing here, do you get the tent? Or do you just, so I probably just open, like, silver border guard. Yeah. That sounds reasonable to me. They both picked up tents, okay. And the ten is certainly at least close to fine, um, and, and maybe even good. I mean, you, you're not going to be playing it when you play your Soothsayer, but you might hit five twice, and that seems like mm -hmm. something you would want to do. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But that's the major benefit to ten. At Silver, you could top deck, and it improves your chances of hitting two fives. The downside right. is that you, it will, when it collides, what? No, no, go back, undo that. Buy a soothsayer. No, no soothsayer. All right. Friendly we'll see if, dominion. We'll see if T-Shift agrees. Friendly dominion from Sibylla. And they do get the double the five right, with the tent. You don't want to play with those nasty attacks. 
No, it's because the trash in is not good. You can't clean up on the cruises. Yeah, t <laughs> Walk up on chores violence. That's what you want to choose in the game of Dominion. You definitely need to be, you need to be in a foul-tempered mood to, to really play this game optimally. All right, six is all right, all right. Nobles, okay. Just going sort of straight for straight for engine components. Mm -hmm. Says I don't believe in the visions from your suit, Sarah. I see the future clearly. So this is unfortunate for Tishov. The garrisons were rotated away, revealing the hill forts, but they are unable to pick one up here. I think the more I look at this board, the more I think it's just try to get six golds and six curses into your opponent's deck and then just play border guards and try and find those golds and hit provinces. Maybe you pick up a displace, uh, you know, use that to speed the game along, but it's it's just so difficult to play engine here. Like you said, maybe you can do it with the border guards, but um, yeah, it's going to be hard to put together. Extremely difficult. This place has to come into either deck because this place gold into province is easy, and then this place estates into border guards or something is easy too. Yeah, the yeah. only thing I would consider. You're gonna have. Game... Sorry. I was just gonna say you're gonna have twenty stop cards right yeah. in, in your deck here. The only thing I would gain with a hill fort is border guard. Later, you could maybe gain a tunnel and one or two bobble just to give you haven capability. Okay, so they take one hill fort. Maybe that should have been our second suit here, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think especially, especially the reckless soothsayers that you want. You want, yeah. I think you want soothsayers on every five you hit. Uh, until until you have three of them. Yeah. This is a bad draw for Sibyloth. They really didn't want to see this the displace here. They could save it. They could save it. They opt to not save anything, though. Save it with the Haven, I mean. Yeah, that was rough. They saw six cards off the Catacombs and only one treasure. Uh, yeah, I'm... They shuffle the deck. So. Bobble, okay. You have Coastal Haven here too, so that it rewards over terminaling a little bit. Mm hmm. But for the money player, that helps smooth, you know, nines and sevens out into eights. Right. So the hill forts get rotated away, strongholds up here, nobles, second nobles for civil. This could be a top deck suit, so yeah, let's see if uh, they do that or if they stick by the two gold pattern. Yeah, Tabdex Soothsayer looks fantastic. They take the buy, which signals right there. Are they going to plan to buy two cheaper things? No, just not top deck the Soothsayer. Hmm. So on eight, do they hit province? Or do they buy province? Not sure. Sybil is definitely trying to play more here on this board. It's a little bit different than the last yeah. game in terms of the player mirror. Displace copper instead of estate. I wonder why. State's a point. You don't lose the point if you displace it. Okay, yep. <laughs> I, have, I have no more arguments. <laughs> 
stronghold. Okay. All right, this is nice with Sybilla. All of these pieces connect. I think they could draw through yeah. here. There's nothing. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, they have a good turn in which they, you know, get to do very little. Um, but they're that's the problem. There's no payload in the in the deck really, and there's so much junk in here, <laughs> uh, which is why right Soothsayer is as good as it is here. Mm -hmm. Ranger, okay. You know that's that's funny because in Sibylla's right up, she's from Texas. Sibylla, Texas Ranger. That's yeah, this, she's so... Walker's daughter, <laughs> kind of thing. <laughs> right, the home hometown connection to the Rangers. That's how yeah. we can that's how we can explain that by. Wait, do you know the show Walker Texas Ranger, or is that just me? Uh, um, no, I'm familiar with it. I don't know it well, but I'm I'm familiar with the reference. Yeah. Okay. Okay. There's no Minnesota Ranger T-shirt. Put that back. Go get a border guard instead. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm surprised they haven't saved more cards for the duration of the game so far. There's been collision on both sides, I think, or excess money at least. What do you want with the stronghold? Cards or coins? I yeah, I'm not sure. Is they right, they take cards? I probably would have thought coins there. Just hitting you know, a nobles is so much better than a tunnel. I want at this what? point in the game. How do they activate the tunnel? They don't have catacombs. Do they have the border guard? Yeah, they have a border guard. Pretty unlikely. The only way to reliably do it is druid, but you're not going to have the... Tr they, they don't have a druid, plus the terminal space for that is really tough to come by. This is unfortunate for Sibylla. That this place was drawn dead twice now. And if you have any chance to build an engine here, then you need to displace the fire as many times as possible. Yeah, you want to be displacing things into border guards uh, in mass, right? Keep hearing you to say Sybil. Yeah. The plural of Sybil is Sybilla. Yeah, province. That looks fine. The Soothsayer plays are just so, so good here relative to the other cards that you could play. Yeah. Opportunity for a top deck Soothsayer again. But uh, if she didn't get it, no, I don't think she'll get it for the remainder of the game. Yeah, it's not shown a lot of interest in playing with the uh, with the soothsayer. Sometimes you see some like, oh, this card's really hurting me. I should maybe pick it up mm -hmm. um, as the game is going. I mean, I I do that. <laughs> like it's not, uh, but uh, yeah, not here. You just see, sort of trying to take more draw and draw. Yeah, this is yeah. awful. The top deck, the catacombs, but you know, deck tracking helps you make a better decision there. Yeah. And these catacombs should probably, if you're trying to draw, not be played because you just have two nobles and a ranger in the shuffle. It's not gonna it's not gonna work. Yeah. So on that note, Sibla is a retired former college librarian. Hobbies include genealogy, playing music, and wood carving. Upcycling old books and paper into artwork. Wow. She and her sister play Dominion a lot, apparently.
all these people with all these hobbies that aren't just playing and watching Dominion. Exactly. I need to meet these people. <laughs> Not only that, she says Dominion games provide our family a way to stay in touch when we don't actually see each other in person for months or years. Incredible, Dominion, bringing families together since 2013. I saw Tishref, uh I mean, so that's, that's incredible. Sorry, I just, we just saw Tishref put the make the decision to put the tunnel in hand and discard the copper oh, wait, when wait. they had the opportunity to uh, take a gold off the tunnel on their one border guard. That has to be a misclick. Here's a druid now. Honestly, I I don't know which way this game is going. Tishoff has more money with the four gold. On the other hand, Sibylla has some nobles and may get more nobles. I future. feel pretty confident that Tishoff is is like way ahead and definitely gonna win. I may live to to regret saying that just now, but I think <laughs> Tishif has a lot of golds at the bottom of this shuffle. And um, uh, I think Sybil, like, even when Sybil draws, they're not going to be doing much with it. No, they need a little bit of money. They need some money. You see, if t Shuff had a displace, I would feel a lot more confident in their position. But all these tunnels and provinces make it more difficult to buy provinces. Whereas the displace could help you, you know. This just you just need to see displace gold and you can get a province. You don't need money all the time. Yeah. Hey, there's money, silver, on top of the deck, too. Will they keep their displace with the haven here? They do. Nice. He should take the third soothsayer. It's a little late for that, but... It's still a nice thing to be able to do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Displaced curse or estate? Estate into tunnel. All right. Yeah, they could start Atacombs discarding that tunnel, drawing it up. Mm -hmm. They could. I could have something of a turn. Play the ranger on a good turn. You know, I'm thinking this is actually a complicated board for newer players. Um, I'm trying to remember how I used to look at things when I first started to play. And if I saw this, I could see all the pieces here. You have actions, you have draw, you have buy, and you know that you're supposed to put all of them together, but they're not straightforward like in the base set village smithy market they're a little awkward compared to you know what you learn from the basics so it could be a little more yeah challenging. yeah it's really tough i think these like no trashing engine boards are are tougher i mean i don't know that this is exactly that but um it, it's tough you see the components and you're like oh yeah i should build here um and you're not thinking like, oh, I'm going to have a minimum of you know, 21 stop cards in my deck, at, you know, assuming that you're playing with Soothsayers or your opponent is, which is, you know, would be a safe assumption at the higher levels. So uh, it's tough. Like, it, it really is tough to be like, oh, I need to actually like really um, either go straight for this money thing and, you know, add a few goodies to that or try to like really 
play as many displaces as possible, get border guards, and um, you know you're gonna you know, reduce your stop card count that way, and all of that. Yep, Tishoff was able to get a tunnel activation off the druid. Yeah, now Tishoff has just a lot, lot more money. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like, nice. I like that they play that ranger. Save the suit, say, buy a province. Move on with life. That sounds sounds good to me. Yeah, now I believe their position a lot more. Yeah, I'm feeling more comfortable with, with what I said earlier. Yeah. Oh, they can save you both can of keep these the hill fort. Yeah. Top decks displays by his ranger. So then you're not saving these suits there, right? If you've just top decked uh, us <laughs> two and all. Yeah. Never mind. Or you just save them, collide. Now you're out of favors. Yeah, the pretty pretty clear mistake there, I think. Hmm. Buying a tent here is interesting. It's probably fairly strictly worse than silver at this point. Yeah. <laughs> now, T-Chef, what do you do? Do you play the Hillford draw and then play Soothsayer and never play the Displace that you just gained? I think from this position, that's right. Suit say or no? Okay. And Bora God, okay. Now Tishoff has officially won the curse split. I would not be surprised if this is where the curse split ends when we end the game. Yeah. I assume this border guard will go back on top of the deck, right? You take the um the horn here. Yeah, I would want the horn. Like on you know, with a small number of border guards in your deck and, and just playing one. Yeah, and they take the horn. Yeah. Probably will have that for quite some time. Fortunate to, um, to get that, I would say. Yeah, I would agree with that, and pr probably will have it for the rest of the game. No guarantee, but I think that would be more likely than not. Yeah. <laughs> if I was sitting on the opposite side and I saw that, I would be I would be unhappy. Like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> They do have more. They have more action density, at least. I don't. I don't know how mad I could get, but yeah, it certainly is not not terribly likely. Do they just take province here, or do they keep trying to build? I don't know what what she would prefer. Province, okay. And you save the nobles at minimum, right? Yeah, at least the nobles, and probably at most the nobles. Nice. 
Both those finds are catacombs. Nobles for Tishoff makes sense. Well, that's excellent. Look at that. Keep that probably not right to play that border guard. You have the... to play it, otherwise it doesn't you don't get the top deck it. I guess that's true. I guess the question is do you want yeah, they had all these nice treasures and oh, the man. nobles and the catacombs that they could have shuffled back in. And I think their deck is pretty bad otherwise. Yeah, no, I understand. I understand. But then I would have led with the border guard, not played it as the third card. Yeah. yeah. You definitely want to keep your border guard top decked. I agree with that. So we'll see if they discharge tunnel here or put it in hand. Druid at Put it right. in hand. <laughs> because they have Druid, right? That, that, that's the reason why. Yeah. They could discard, gain our gold, save the displace. It might. What are your discards, though, right? Yeah, and discard the other. So they could have just. It had the tent. Yeah. Yeah. Not that, not that it matters much, but. <laughs> They didn't keep the displaced. I don't think it's I thought better. They would have kept the displaced. They took Sky's Gift instead of Wins. Mace the Gold is nice. Nicer earlier there. in the game. Yeah. T shelf has um has bought our fourth suit sayer by the way, so that'll come up soon. Oh yeah. So it's probably not right. Well almost definitely not right. I don't think the provinces are gonna empty here too soon. Uh that the curse split would stay just six oh. Probably see it go eight oh. Take another ranger. Huh. Wow. <laughs> Horn on lantern. Get some more border guard, Sibylla. This this one border guard is certainly doing a valiant job. Nice catacombs. Yeah, just keep this. Top deck your nobles. Maybe. Yeah, I would. I would like a top deck nobles here. Mm -hmm. So no nobles on border guard on top. On the other hand, this is a province with T-Shuff. Yep. Yeah. Yes, yeah, Sibylla does have the problem where T-Shuff just has the golds. And like Sibylla's got this top deck nobles here that just is worthless. Well, what happened to the border guard? Where did it go? Um, did they just choose not to? Oh, that would have been so good. They still good. have the horn. They drew into our nobles. That could have been a much better turn. Yeah, they elected to play play nobles instead of just turning the journey token over. It seems okay. Probably would have preferred to take the journey token there, but... I still want to know where the border guard is. That's the, one of the best cards in your deck. <laughs> It really seems like they just chose to discard it. 
I can't I can't find any other reason. Uh, the log isn't clear about that decision, but they had the they have the horn the whole time. Played the border guard. That must have must have been that. Yeah, I guess they discarded it. So your teacher plays the nobles instead of electing to double province. They're just displaced the nobles into province and doubled. Would have been, I think, a pretty nice thing to do. Let's get to province and maybe do more stuff. You know, save the displace at least. Yeah, double province would probably be game winning there. Okay, they go province nobles instead of. You've got 31 cards to get through. I don't think you're seeing that nobles again. So, having two fewer nobles in the deck for the, having four more points, I would have made that trade. But they're still just so far ahead that uh, I think they've they got a pretty good chance. Although we could see you know, dud 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 is not impossible. No, it is not impossible. What's the extra ranger? Okay, please the ranger. Well, what do you save? What do you put? Uh, in the I think I would save the dis displace probably. So you want to, you want the cards that are going to help you end the game. Yeah, if you keep displace on stronghold, you're guaranteed province. Duchy. Looks like full green for T shuff. They're probably thinking about what to put into the haven here. Yeah, I think I agree that you'd want displace and stronghold. But if you have like a golden hand, you'd rather just displace the stronghold. Okay, they they do keep that. Only at seven, but they have such a commanding lead points wise that I think that's probably game over if they take a province, take a duchy. Yeah, yeah, I'm not exactly sure how much is half here. It's quite a lot, 40. but having passed out six curses already, it's not that much. True, true. I forgot about the curses. It's just eight and eight, 16. 20, 63 is half, I think. Yes, yeah, that's literally half, but I, I certainly feel good, pretty good about a 49 to 19 lead yeah, with yeah, these yeah, deck states. Yeah. It's just, that's just me practicing for when I have to play. How much is half? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have to count half. I almost never count half. Maybe if it's like a, if it's like a slog, I guess I'll, I'll count it just to, you know, if I really need to, but. Talking about Slug, have you played any games where this new card, Marchland, has played a prominent role? I have. Yeah, I mean, sometimes Marchland is, like, really good. Like, there's several times where Marchland's really good. 
um, you know, either like you have other green piles on and then it's just like, it can be a lot of points, mm -hmm. um, much more than Silk Road could have been. Um, but also like it combines well with there being a lot of green cards and it being a lot of points Does the buy, you know, discard thing makes it really cheap to be able to pick up more of if you have other stuff. It can also be like its own rush thing sometimes where you just hit five and discard. So like there's a lot more play with with Marchland than I expected. Like when it first came out, I thought this is pretty weak alt BP that sort of do a little bit with. And it mm -hmm. kind of is that, but it, it does play. Like there's a lot more times where you're like, oh, Marchland's here. I really need to like play for it. I see. Have you played much with it? No. I haven't seen it at all, actually. Actually, I've played probably, I don't know, maybe just like half a dozen games with it, but wow. in like three or four of those, I was like, oh, yeah, this is, Marshland's a real consideration. I'm hoping it shows up in one of my league games. Yeah, I like it. It's a good, I think it's a good card design. I think not it is, super, uh, super strong and dominating, but you have to think about it. Mm -hmm. I think it is better than Silk Road. Well, I mean, I Silk Road just required so many like, BP cards to be worth a serious number of points that it was just so hard to make work. Yeah, Silk Road was four, right? Every four green cards gets you one VP. Mm-hmm. And the bottom half of Marchland is a big deal. Yes. Because is... right, it like self it self synergizes. Yeah. Yeah. Are we are in turn twenty seven here. Oh yeah, we are apparently. I stopped paying attention to the game. <laughs> <laughs> I did too. Cause where's T shot? Fifty two points. That's very close to half. This is quite a turn from Sibola, though. Yeah, the... yeah, the best part of Marchland is that, that strange us on his end is that sometimes it is free. So then you could get two for the price of one, kind of. Or maybe more. Yeah. It can be free or even plus money if you... Yeah. I think, oh, it can be really finicky. Like, I've had... I had one game where um, I got a lot of Marchlands early and I was scoring, you know, I was basically buying Marchland plus Province or every turn. Uh, and then my deck, because I was hitting like five and having a bunch of green cards. Uh, it was like, that was my whole deck. It was like draw and green cards. Mm -hmm. And um, that worked for a while, uh, but then, then it started falling apart and I would like, hit four, hit three. Uh, and I'd, I'd have like 14 cards in hand, but I'd have like three. Uh, and that does not work so well. I see. So the cost um, five is significant. Like you need some money to be able to afford it. Right. Yeah, you can't just have. You sort of feel like you don't need any money sometimes because you're like, oh, I need to hit five. But yeah, you still need to hit five. I am kind of interested to try it with something like Watchtower, where you get it early to enable your draw cards rather than use it to accumulate points. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. I hadn't really thought of that type of play. So you, you gain it mid-turn with something, cut your hand size, gain the points like storeroom, like some kind of cursed village storeroom kind of thing. Right. And then draw back up. It'd be... Maybe do it again. It's pretty finicky, but you can certainly certainly make that work. I don't know how to gain much on that five though. University doesn't do it. Yeah, you would need like highway groom. Don't even get me started on this groom business. Groom rushes. <laughs> Just like You don't like groom games? No. You don't like eleven turn games where the pile's empty every time? No, that I'm okay with, but just yeah, groom, 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 green, 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 dot. You know. <laughs> oh yeah, like groom, groom mill is just like dumb. Find there no interesting decisions to be made. Yeah, there's so rarely other stuff that's worth doing on those groom rushes that 
it's just like I had one I had a groom rush earlier today, I think, where there was cargo ship there and I was sort of I became interested in the idea of like, is it worth adding cargo ship? But that's like <laughs> I think the answer is probably like no, first <laughs> off. And second off, like that was the only question I had of the whole thing. And otherwise mm-hmm. it's just like, oh, I'm just buying grooms and mills. Yeah. What is this board? This is um like the villages are all in the black market. You have frigate, you have plenty of draw and attack to like incentivize village and plenty of trashing. So I think I think you do want to dig in black market for villages and try and play here. Yeah. I almost always exclusively buy black market. I think I mean, I do too. I think black market needing villages is my least favorite, like needing something out of the black market state because yeah, yeah. you can only play black market as your terminal. And if you don't, like the, it, like the ramp is so fast for the player that gets the villages first that you can just get left behind. Like in, yep. it's over by turn six. Mm-hmm. That has happened to me before. So, Militia versus Bounty Hunter on the opening. I prefer the Bounty Hunter. Yeah, I think so. You're fine hitting three here. Underling's really good. Circle of Witches, too. Yep, especially with the Circle of Witches. You could trash it out with Steward, but two mineral spaces on his here. They had six, and they bought us Silver. They didn't notice. I'm pretty sure that's what happened there. Silver for six is, yeah, just, uh, whoops. Yeah. Yeah, I think they forgot that Bounty Hunter gives you money. That's premeditation. That's what that is. Never premeditate. Yeah, always always look at what Steph tells you you have. Don't, don't just assume you know. <laughs> Okay, on the lane. Do you try with the black market here? No? Okay. Take the points by an on the lane. Yeah, I don't mind the frigate play there. It doesn't do much, but... Black market with only three coins is unlikely to find you the village you're looking for. It is unlikely to have the money to buy a village, but there are some villages that cost three. Look, here's a village. Cost four, though. It's true. You could find one. And it's not like the frigate does. I mean, the frigate really doesn't do anything, and hitting four doesn't really do anything over hitting three. So black market play probably would have been preferable there. They didn't take the galley. No. Did they, haven't they listened to me in Thunder Dominion just like <laughs> yelling about how good Royal Galley is? It's probably not. Uh, Royal Galley is good. Oh, it's With... so good. I still think I, I think Royal to... Galley is like one of the 10 best cards in the game. Like it's so good. Yeah, it is quite good. I, I just need to get used to the half and half part of it because it it holds one of your cards hostage and if you have too many galleys then they have nothing to connect with, you know. Yeah, I guess like it's just so like you just need like it holds them hostage but it plays them both turns like there's no tempo disadvantage, um, like yeah you need like it's a little bit awkward to get started with. Uh, like early in the game and like you don't want to add them too early but like the effect is just so good no the effect is amazing i agree but it, i don't know like i have to change my mind a little bit because i don't know the first thing i learned with duplicates to duplicate in actions is throne room and that is while it does double up on the action it does it over the course of two turns and that i don't know it's a little bit more difficult for me to have, wrap my head around 
Yeah, right. It's more of like a reliability card than something that like gives you more play. Um, but like the reliability is just like humongous, right? It like turns yeah. your silk merchants into wharfs. It turns your uh right like villages into schemed lost cities. Like it's it's just like except with another action. Like it's just so good. It's so good, yeah. It's kinda like Prince. It's like Prince except it costs four. Yeah. And you could keep changing the target on the prince. You keep changing the target, and it doesn't slow you down the turn you play it. <laughs> it's like... Hey, here's our village. Too bad you can't afford it. Very much too bad. I would, uh... I think I King's Court is, like, the highest win percentage swing of the black market <laughs> outside of, like, Outpost and <laughs> Recruiter, I think. Yeah, that's not surprising. King's Court on a cry. Stranger Sun. Allies has my favorite simple cards. Royal Galley is part of that. Yeah, Galley is, you're right. Easy to understand. And strong. Hey, look, Abundance. I like abundance too much. It is a nice card, but Highwayman is even nicer. Well, the terminal space no, may you not can't be. Can't play the Highwayman. That's the thing. Yeah. I think. Why it's didn't Sibylia curse? I don't know. Really? Yeah. What's happening? The, uh, the uh... kindness. Is is an option, maybe. No, nah, that's the tilt. That's the tilt. The, the three nil down. I suspect <laughs> that little bit of tilt. I love, I love the uh, sort of trying to picture this sort of retired librarian just <laughs> tilted right now, <laughs> in the middle of this match. They're getting their underling curse play as a result. Brave rubber. <laughs> Maybe, maybe they're saving them up so they'd land in five or six at once, like Coven. Yeah, let's see. Let me see you exile six at once, T-Shuff. Yeah, I just try the, the that's, yeah, trying to, the flood strategy later. One defense. I think the Grave Robber... And I don't love it, but it could come in useful. I mean, I, I think I would certainly try to just Grave Robber this Frigate here and be the only player playing with Grave Robber. Take your Frigate back up again later, maybe, or just keep trashing with it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the Grave Robber, the grave robber will do. Certainly over terminals here. t is, I mean, they have their pick of terminals here to... Both Blade. of them, I think, have too many terminals. Sibylla just bought a tragic hero from the black market as well. Yeah, so both way, way over terminaled. Arena helps with that somewhat, but... Nah, I'm not buying my action cards to get two points from them. I'm buying them to play them. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not making the argument, I'm just yeah. saying. It. No, it helps a little bit. <laughs> Gold, okay. That's fine. Hits the curse button. Seem right to me. Mm -hmm. Two underlings, silver. I would want, yeah, I would want as many underlings as I could get here. Yeah, just jam all the curses. You know, the only non-terminal thing here that you really want to be playing with other than Bounty Hunter. Okay, I think what is not, this? Not only are they only... Sorry, they, they refuse to curse. Yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> Maybe they don't... they've seen their opponent 
spend three favors for the curse, and still they were not cursed. It's do they not know? Like like it's are they just kind? I mean, it, it they probably are just missing the button, something like that. They must be a pacifist. Or just kind. Says Stranger. So. I mean, they refuse refuse to buy Susei or last game. I mean, we've got two more games. Have we seen Sibilia play with a cursor yet, or no? Or no. they maybe just truly truly a pacifist? Yeah. I hope they are. That'd be really cool. <laughs> <laughs> We've unearthed a Dominion player who just like does not give out curses under any circumstances. I went through a small phase like that where I tried to always play against curses and win, but that that doesn't work. You you, you can't play Dominion like that. Yeah, there's a problem with that is is how good curses are to give out in this game. Okay, she gave one. Okay, to give one. Tactical. I could try to come up with a narrative for, for that, but uh, I'm not going to. <laughs> okay, black market and a lot of money. Bring back the king's court. It's possible, right? <laughs> we just turned over the black market deck. I also have enough for the province. Oh yeah. <laughs> I forgot they had enough for province. I guess that is the point. I mean, so you, ideally here, right, you're not, uh, like this game is black market, trying to buy villages, trying to thin down. And then you're trying to have like, 35 unique cards right and then you buy fairgrounds and like there's going to be a little bit of jockeying over the fairgrounds pile but like that's that's probably what you're looking to do here i don't know what we'll say i wonder if we'll see them really go for the grounds pile or we'll see them more sort of just empty the provinces so you see there's some people too with this line i thought that okay there's no villages here there's no engine to be built let me try to play money so they'll start with the black market. If nothing shows up early, they quickly transition over into money. And there are some money options on the board here. Yeah, there so, are some. So you have to take the provinces by yourself. Like, really, you have to empty the provinces on your own and the, as the money player here, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they do so, take fairgrounds over province. Over fish and village as well. And sentinel. Both of those cards are great, yeah. especially Fishing Village. Fishing Village is a lot of village. This minion. It's probably the card you want most out of the black market when you're looking for villages. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So now, hmm, they bought fairgrounds. Hmm. I'm trying to see what they want. An interesting but... time. Yeah, another militia as well. Just two minerals on two minerals for everybody. I am, I am more a fan of over terminaling than most players are because I am like. I just want, like, I often would prefer to have a collision and get to play a terminal rather than just not have a terminal. Like, fine with that. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, we're, like, these decks are, like, terminal collision, three terminal collisions, you know, like, almost every turn now. There's clearly, clearly over terminal to here pretty seriously. Yeah. Gold is nice. Yeah. Another curse coming out. Yeah.
Actually, no, I think I understand. Sibylla's play here with that fairgrounds. I think, yeah, seems to be centered around the fairgrounds, huh? We have one of each of these things so far. It just put the grave robber in exile, which tells me they don't want to use it. They just want to have the copy of it counted for the fairgrounds. So maybe we might see rabble or cut purse from them here. I can see it. Yeah, they definitely are committed to the unique thing, other than the black market, right? Uh, really, the uniques play is you'd want to be leaning into the black market because that's where you're getting sustainable uniques. But um, yeah. Yeah, see, there's the rabble. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll see how many things they could fish out of the black market then. We will. I'm also very interested to see if we'll see a curse given out after this underling play. We better. Otherwise, we riot. You do. Okay. I'm assuming at this point it was just sort of like a late notice that, like, oh, there's the circle of witches button here that I can pass out a curse with. Right. Which is unfortunate. I was really hoping that we just had a pacifist player. <laughs> yeah. Militia. That's a bad militia for Sibylla. Not easy to decide what to discard here. It's just maximizing draw. What would your other option be? Play the steward and just trash coppers? Yeah. That is the other option. So we do see the underlings piled, which makes sense here. Yeah, yeah. Chris's will go soon as well, but there's no third pile under threat. No, no, not at all. And it's sort of hard to see how a third pile, unless it's like duchies or, or provinces or fairgrounds, is uh, going to be angled towards. Yeah, I could see heavy bounty hunter here, maybe like just bounty hunter black market. <laughs> just like buy whatever bounty hunter it. Yeah, sort of yeah. a thing. Yeah, um, just give me a few minutes. Here. I have to take a call. Sorry. Sure, no worries. Thanks. So now it's just me. <laughs> what, what can I say about this game at this point? Um, I guess we haven't really talked about state. I, I don't really know who's winning. I guess. I mean, I prefer going for fairgrounds here. So in that sense, I like sort of what Sibylla is doing. Uh, but both players have fairly consistent decks as far as, as far as what I've seen. Um, and I think Sibylla maybe has a little bit more buying power and has been a little bit more judicious about terminals than, than Tisha has been. Single province makes sense, even, even if the plan is to ultimately buy mostly fairgrounds, which I would think it is. I'm not certain that that province is ever better than fairgrounds. But uh, I could see I could see that being the case, especially early on. So if you're choosing to trash, play the abundance down. That's that's pretty reasonable. It's nice to be able to play the abundance here on a off turn. The abundance is really not not doing anything for you after the underling's gone. You have to pick up these other terminals or bounty hunter. 
Bounty Hunter is probably what makes sense to pick up more than the other terminals, but it costs four, so it's not really helping you that much. We'll take a really late sack of loot here for the fun value. That is, that is done. It, it, Sibelius deck isn't totally huge, so they should get a little bit of play out of that sack of loot. And we're still going to have quite a few more turns left in this game. I mean, it's turn 19 now, but I'd be surprised if we don't have another seven, eight more turns at least. I mean, these piles are pretty high, and we're still having trouble hitting six um, and not consistently buying fairgrounds on, that, on those sixes, so... We're going to have quite a few more turns here. The other thing with the sack of loot is that it'll contribute to the fairgrounds. It's true. It's excellent for that, right? Yeah. <laughs> it gives you, every time you play it, you get a unique. Unless you're very unlucky. <laughs> Just keep getting doubloons every time you play it. Which doubloons <laughs> would be great here. <laughs> yes. Yeah, one doubloons would be fine here. But the amount of times I've almost shot my computer because I got doubloons. It's not even funny. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. It's so it's so rough when you're like, all I need is a plus buy. I've got like nine coins. And then you're like, here's the balloons. <laughs> no. I don't understand who designed loot. You know? Why couldn't all of the loot have plus buy on it, really? Yeah, I've heard many, many... Uh, sort of people who are who are upset at the way loot is and like trying to suggest like many different things that would work to be like yeah this would fix it i didn't just be like being able to have plus buy on it every time or like taking away the cases with um like staff or like staff has all the tricks that it has or sword where like it's just it's a monkey or a governor game and sword is just like the whole game mm -hmm. yeah yeah, but the most frustrating part is fishing for a plus buy when you need it and you don't get it. Yeah, that's definitely the most common one, and it is frustrating. It's frustrating when you're like, doubloons, insignia, and you're like, oh gosh. And then, I guess the loot pile would be fine as is if all the loot gainers gave plus buy. Stack of loot gives you a plus buy, so you're not totally deprived. Yeah, right. Sack of loot games, you're like not really concerned at all because you're right. You have it on the sack of loot. If you don't get it at first, you still have two buys. You're probably going to get it on the next play. Mm -hmm. But when it's like, um, you know, like jeweled, jeweled egg, or like you're having to do like forays or perils or something, and it's like yeah. critical, it's really Foray, frustrating. Peril, looten, like those, those aren't good. The egg, even you could just not trash your egg and have the plus buy. Right, yeah, eggs a little bit better. It can still be rough if you have like five eggs and you trash five of them and you end up with like two or three buys. That's yeah, no, that, that has happened to enough. me before. That has happened to me before. <laughs> it happens. It happens. Or like you end up just hanging on to your jeweled egg and just keeping it because you need the plus buy so desperately, but meanwhile your opponent's like playing a sword every turn. Yeah. I don't know. So yeah, who designed loot? It's an interesting mechanic. It doesn't feel terribly consistent with with a lot of the other minion mechanics. Uh, other than like boons and hexes. It feels consistent with those. Yes. Yes, and those I don't like either. I like I like the boon pile a little bit, uh, but yeah, the, but yeah, it's also like kind of a mess. And, uh, the hex pile is even Donald say that uh, the hex pile was not something that he's fond of. Ah, uh, okay. Hama. Have you been counting know, uniques so. in both of these players' decks? No, no. You I know can't. the exact count? <laughs> I can't. Actually, hold on. 
Might be able to do Sibylla. Sibylla is a tragic hero from the block market. Saka loot and Hama no. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Maybe 14. I don't know. They have some nice hands here. The last hand, unfortunate to have it hit by the militia. That was another fairgrounds. Mm. Almost guaranteed. And okay, this is another fairgrounds for sure. Fairgrounds is the third pile. Hmm. Yeah, that makes sense given the context of the black market board. Yeah. Um, it doesn't know. have that many points, so it's a little tough for them to lower fairgrounds. Hang on. t shoff just gained a huge boost in points. They bought a duchy, probably crossed a fairgrounds threshold. Yeah, must have. <laughs> Look at Sybil. <laughs> uh, I Three, don't think six. they'll be buying anything with that. Negative one, negative one, negative one. <laughs> and this is a comfortable position for t to buy the second to last fairgrounds. Yeah, it is. You clearly, you clearly want to push that pile. Here we are on turn 24. These decks were always... There. Sorry, these decks were always... I just said, these decks were always destined to be pretty bad, I think, with, you know, unless you got nice black market pulls and were, like, super disciplined about trashing and exiling stuff. Mm -hmm. Not quite six here. Yep, no, no way to get there. Probably just, yeah, take six in the part of the game where you take points and then six here and you win. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be 4 0, right, for T Chef? Yep, 4 for them. Oh. Did Sibylla just jump across a fairgrounds threshold? I wasn't paying attention. They bought cut purse. Not sure. But still in a losing position. Yeah, yeah. Game is in hand already. Okay, credit to Tisha for not playing the militia to make the game go longer. Take the coins from sure. the steward. Always appreciated to not, not play the extra attack at the end. Yep. Let me see. Yeah, four coppers. What? How did Sibylla end up with eight curses? What? Oh, they had nine underlings. That's why. Okay. Oh, yeah. I didn't notice that the underling split was so different there. Yeah, me too. It's been a while since I've looked at, <laughs> looked at a new Dominion board. Um, <laughs> another one where it's like, this is a fairly tricky board to play, it looks like to me. Yeah, this is hard. Frigate makes it hard. 
otherwise specialist specialist, which is hot bridge. Yeah, well, with no trashing. Yeah, with no trash in, you just have to put all the ingredients in your deck and then wait. Yeah, just hope to put it together. But you're gonna, gosh, you're gonna dot a lot with. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. No trashing, specialist witches huts and bridges. I mean, it's not clear to me that like that ever works. You have long. I mean, you have to go for it. You can't leave it uncontested. No, 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 no. And and launch could help you. Could could. Yeah, it certainly is helpful to the to the consistency of the engine thing here. There's no doubt about that. It helps you at least have like okay turns when you're gonna have nothing turns as long as you have you know, three coins in hand. Which if you have bridges, like your duds are probably gonna have a bridge in hand and hopefully a couple coins. I mean, you could use Miser to clean up a little bit if you want, but that sounds like a bad idea. Yeah, you could. It's just so, so slow. I mean, might be worth doing because the payload's dense enough here and you're finicky enough without it, but probably not because every time you play Miser, it's like you're just taking the turn off, basically. Mm -hmm. Camel train is interesting. I could see it paying off though, the camel train. Could. Camel train's a nice card. It's not it's not super powerful, but it, it can be quite bad to add to your deck, but it can also, right? It's a gainer. It can it can really gain stuff for relatively cheap if you play it nicely. So Yeah. So we see the I Don't love it in the sure. open. Yeah, especially on this kingdom where the important cards are like 5, 5, and 4. You need a bit more money before being able to capitalize on the camel train. Like here, you'll gain a couple of lurkers if you want. Um, yeah. T-Shuff opened with the Miser. Sibylla got one on the first shuffle, so they are both doing that. Yeah, we see both misers. And it is. I, I'm not sure. Sorry. Uh, I'm not sure that it's wrong to be playing with a little bit of miser here. Um, it's probably not worth it. It's probably just line stuff up. But given how hard it is to line up, you know, specialist, specialist, which is hut, or like specialist lurker, which is hut, which is like the other option, or maybe. You could like specialist a witch's hut into a launch. I mean, I guess maybe with launch here, that's really the thing that says, well, maybe you really don't need miser because you can just draw, play coins, and have the components you need to kick off. Mm -hmm. So you saw what Sibylla did there. Exiled our goal on the turn before, the, the camel train before, now bought our gold. And yeah, they have lots of golds. Yeah, they have two misers as well. So I don't think they are at all interested in specialists or witches hot. Yeah, I'm not expecting that we'll see like you know, five specialists, five witches huts, five bridges types type decks here. You should have had a very sad miser there to have it not collide with any any <laughs> copper yeah. yeah that's awful okay changeling yeah might as well set aside now what Changeling, okay. Expect so to see maybe gold as the changeling target. Yeah, yeah, I expect, especially for Sibylla, to want to connect the changeling with the gold. Uh, it could, 
think I would launch in here. No? Specialist. I certainly would have thought about thought about launching. Yeah, because be I play that miser. It would have had a good chance. Yeah. Instead, they get a specialist on a silver farm. Hmm. No, which is hot for T shelf. And they will regain the specialist from the trash. I'm not sure here. Sibylla has a lot of gold. T shelf seems to be going after the engine. Yeah, having three coppers gone and the misers were three is far from nothing. And they could even get another miser down here. And then just sort of go for go for provinces. And I'd be worried if I was playing the engine here, like about just getting beaten by well shuffled money. Yeah. Silva this time, no change of lane. Thought with a thinner deck you would want to change a lane. Yeah, easier to collide. I do like you like T shift's deck position uh, pretty well with the, the four coppers down and Few golds, a few silvers, some, you know, the witch's hut. All right, so let's see what they do here with all this money. Do they launch? Do they pick up the province? Yeah, province. Province seems not bad. Launch seems fine too. Once you get the, you know, maybe you could put a another thing on your tavern mat by a gold and then you're sort of provincing out from there or hit 12 and take province that seems quite defensible the key difference in the decks is the bridge t shelf does not have a bridge right you're not doing too much with the bridge here with these not yet. Yeah, if you're not, if you're not specialisting it. Yeah, that was the thing. You line up a specialist on a bridge, and then suddenly you have quite a few options. Yeah, they get the bridge now. Okay, okay. I was wondering what they would do here. If they would go for green, or if they would continue to build. Interesting. So they take the bridge, but they had discarded the miser. Probably should have asked for another undo there. Yeah. So they could have set aside one more copper and still. Had enough money for the bridge, probably. Yeah, I think pretty easily. Okay, I like that Sibla put coppers twice. Fool's gold is... I don't like that. I prefer the second Luca. Or nothing. Yeah, or nothing. Or like a copper. <laughs> I might actually prefer a copper there. Hmm. But I do like that Sibylla has caught up on the uh on the tavern mat here, given given the commitment to Miser. Yep. Choosing to play the specialist on the Miser here to gain a third one. To gain a Miser. Instead of hitting eight. Okay. And what will you buy with four? A second bridge. All right. Now let's see. Sibylla has the option for green as well here. Do they go for that? I think it's I think it's time to green, especially from Sibylla's position. Okay. Launches into gold. 
still green. It's you have preferred to keep color. that gold on top. Yep. And they will gain on a lot of gold here. Okay. Okay, so Sibylla has made her intentions clear, I think. I like Sibylla's position a lot here because Tishuf has got all these terminals now at this point after buying these bridges and doesn't have nearly as much treasure. I, I'm not so sure. If Tishuf gets a few more specialists, he could wipe out those green cards quite quickly, I think. So yeah, Tishuf is closer to, to the engine. Yeah. So I fleet, okay. So he's given himself an extra turn. Early for fleet, I would say, but it does show where his mind is at. Yeah, if you're trying to pull off the bridge thing, you would you would want you know, more specialist or probably another witch's hut. Definitely. I'm not, I'm not sure on deck composition, but you know one of those types of things. Okay, this is excellent. We have a proper race on now. Two provinces with Sibylla. Okay, Tishov now joins the race. One province behind. So they've stopped building. This is a definite province, right? Yeah, I think points points only at this point. Yeah. Well, especially consistent with what um Sibylla has been doing. Right, especially on Sibylla's side. What is in the trash? Oh, a specialist. Excellent for t -shelf. And then they get to buy a province now. All right. Oh. Oh, launch into a bridge. Nice card to find. I think it only helps you buy an estate. <laughs> yeah, doesn't do much, unfortunately. Wow, already on double duchy. Uh, double duchy? The quad ultimate province rule or something. I'm not sure. <laughs> Sibla is having some nice draw here. Yeah, this is excellent for them. Yeah, that's great to pass out the curse and take the province. Wow, and a fifth province in hand. Look at this. It looks like we'll see a Sibla win here. Yeah, I think so. Tishov doesn't have enough gas with the bridges to catch up. And what good is your extra turn or fleet if there are no points to collect? Yeah. Yeah, and Sybil will also probably just have a chance to take fleet too if they want, but it probably will not come into play. It's possible Sybil could draw like, the five green card thing twice in a row or something like that. They have enough enough they, junk where that could happen i don't think they have 10 green cards they have four provinces to wouldn't yeah it'd be confused. like coppers and green cards you know like oh, like okay. hitting less than five twice in a row yeah I <laughs> like, see. The, like an open in hand but they it's not happening <laughs> they just have province again and they, they have the win yeah i guess they don't even have that many coppers so maybe it was actually pretty close to impossible for them to have duds they don't hit eight or at least five. Yeah, this is good. This is good. I like this this game. And I like that Sybil is on the board, no? Yeah. It's just, I certainly wouldn't want to see a, a six O. Really in any in any match. It's Nice to see both players get on the board. Yeah. 
unless you have someone you just you know hate for personal reasons and you love seeing them lose then but that's that's not the case here i can assure you that yeah Probably double duchy from T Shuff if I had to guess. Yeah, that seems like the only play. Could take province duchy. I don't hate that. That gives you oh. probably a better chance of winning, right? Actually, yeah, province duchy is the play. You're right. You just have to hope to draw your bridge with some stuff again. Yeah. Province Dutch is definitely the play. That would be so sad for Sibyl. <laughs> that would be brutal. Start with the Duchy, so that brings some doubt into play. Nah, well, they're definitely taking the Duchy. If it's Duchy, Duchy, or Duchy Province is the question. Yeah. Alright, alright. Oh, oh, right. no, that's oh. not enough. Nope. Find the bridge, but not with not with any money, not with enough to launch. If they even had just one more coin, launching would have been really interesting with two bridges down, but Yeah. Oh. See the curse? The curse. That was a curse. Sybil, good job on um putting the curse in the deck. Sybil gave up the pacifist ways and yeah. that worked out well. You could just imagine her sitting down there. Oh no, please, 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 please. They just need four points to win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you try. You have to try that. That was a play. Okay. Yeah, that's certainly worth the try. All right now, Sybil, uh, untilted. Yeah, that should improve the mood a little bit. Especially when you could tell your opponent, look, I gave you a whole extra turn and you still couldn't do anything with it, you know? Right. Yeah, I definitely would have been uncomfortable <laughs> at the end of that game in Sybil's position, but uh, it worked out. And they were, they were ahead sort of the whole time. They were, they were, they were. Uh, so clashes and everything you need for an engine and collection scoring and I wonder what we're going to see. What about these warlords though? I mean, I think they're worth... Well, I mean, certainly worth playing with, I think, because you have... You're gonna you'd want to play with more than two werewolves here mm -hmm. if it wasn't for Warlord. Yeah, so I'm not I'm not sure how much points you could get from collection because of that. Yeah, probably not that many. I don't think Collection will, I mean, it, it, you see a few points while you're building, but it's not really a big point score here. And you could buy stuff, like buy like hideouts and trash them, but that's not very good. I wouldn't think relative to just buying points. That's sort of Warlord games though, right? They, they really limit what you would otherwise look to do on a board. Mm-hmm. And this, uh, well, how about village? What's happened with that? Much prefer the sailor. Yeah, so warlord is one card like that. Frigate is another card like that. Um, both have come out fairly recently. Yeah, they both really dominate the context of the kingdom they're in. Yeah, not only that, they they locked down. The 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 in the classical engines that people have known for a while they, they, they force yeah, they you do. to play differently in a significant way yeah i don't mind frigate as much as i i do warlord um just with, with frigate you at least still get to like play all your cards and you just only get to play four at the end of your turn 
um, and, and you know, during your turn, that's all you get to have at a time. But, like Warlord is so, I mean, I mean Frigate can be kind of bad too, right? But Warlord is so, it's like, okay, now you only get two of everything. Yeah. So very important to manage the clashes pile uh, appropriately, right? To to make sure that that's true for both players, or ideally, it's if it's only true for your opponent, then you're in fantastic shape. Exactly. None of the okay. I was just we, about to say nobody's picked up a clashes yet, but. Yeah, three harbor villages that have no opportunity to give you coins uh, before battle plan is uh, interesting to see. Yeah. Did bandit? Or... Oh, forge. Huh. They do take the forge. Very nice for them. They're missing Archer here is sad, but they probably have a chance to get it on the next turn. And they're the only ones with the battle plan, right? So once they get yeah. around to it, they'll be able to take it. Well, t Shuff has the battle plan. Sibylla doesn't, so she has to snatch it while it's available, I think. Yeah, so could get it here, could give the Harbor Villagers some purpose. I think the Archer's certainly good enough, even if you're playing Bandit Money here, where, mm -hmm. yeah, with the. Which is sort of what we're seeing, like Bandit Money, but with, you know, with Villages and some other cards from, from Sibylla. Mm. I'm less sure what Tishof is doing. Well, you see, they have the forge. the forge. Yeah. That suggests they want to draw by engine type things. Gold there yeah, from Sibylla. Yeah, okay. So it might be another money versus engine thing here. Yeah, it does does look that way. We'll see if Tishof picks up draw here soon. I guess they'll pick up Warlord. Yeah. the opportunity and i guess that's the thing eh? warlord doesn't really hurt money decks at all no it doesn't and it just becomes sort of duration drug to the collection yeah uh, which is good. nice like if you're playing component deck here that collection's gonna get you a lot of points and it's clear that Sybil is not gonna ever have the deck control to play warlords consistently Mm -hmm. So the issue though is if you do not pick up warlords, your opponent could get more collections than you know they would have ordinarily been able to do if you contested those key piles with them. What is happening? Why? Why did this forge turn an estate into an estate with just one copper? Uh, because they wanted to only have six debt after the Royal Blacksmith buy, I guess, which is like very confusing because you would really think you'd want to trash coppers, you know, pretty aggressively before buying a Royal Blacksmith. Yeah. But look, they measured it out perfectly. Yeah. They knew what they had turn 10. Mm hmm. I wanted a green shuffle that wise, I suppose. Sybil is probably keen on a platinum here. Missed twice now. Oh. Yeah, I just missed. Just take the province. Oh, okay. Pressure on. I like it. I, I do like that Sybil has sort of played some more of these, like, I'm just going to play Money, Province. Yeah. In the first game, just going to play more straight Rebuild. You got to see a few where T-Shuff's playing with more of the Kingdom, and it's been close in, in some of these, despite the relative lack of mirroring. Yeah. 
I do like this push from Sibawa. We'll see how it goes. So to continue, this should be province, right? And then you have to get yeah. six more of them. Can you get six more of them? It's tough. Uh, like bandit helps. But not... It's still tough without having anything you can mill with. Yeah. Yeah. I thought they would have picked up our forge there, Sibala, but they went for gold instead, which is a little confusing. Yeah, I guess they're just thinking like they need more more money density. But I think even if you want to take eight provinces playing money here, you want a, you want a second bandit. Especially because they have villages too. They can maybe even resolve collision. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But T-shirt stack is pretty far away from working, so you know, it's unclear how uh, how this team's going to turn out to me. Oh, royal blacksmith! What? No. That's a little confusing to to see from from that deck position for sure. If they didn't buy the province, I would be more on board with the purchases. Right, if you're building, then then sure, right, build. There's plenty to build here. Um, but if you're if you're not, then yeah, just empty provinces. And then to pressure the province pile, there's farmland to help you and forge to help you. So that's why I was kind of excited to see if that would hop on yeah it's decent decent help for the province thing forge is a pretty weak you know miller but i can't get the job done yeah no but the thing is you pressure the opponent you know you take two provinces and tell t if i'm taking six more what are you going to do about it and then that sometimes induces mistakes and lets you um push through Right. Yeah, I certainly would, would have liked to, to see the just pressure it, pressure that pile. And if they didn't take the blacksmith, they'd be able to take a colony here. Yeah. They could still take the province, though. They probably will. Okay, okay. We have our province, second province. See battle plan first to draw more, then warlord. Yeah, that's just yeah. Just choosing to draw fewer cards. I don't know if they play the blacksmith or the bandit here. I would have preferred the bandit. Yeah. But it's going to be, I mean, you can still buy gold if that's what they want to do, and they got some cycling done. So yep. blacksmith seems right to me. You see what the blacksmith did? It took them off of eight. They had eight, and then they had to drop two coins. Yeah, I mean, I would have preferred the blacksmith never be in the deck in the, in in the, first, the first place. place. Yeah. <laughs> you want to draw by a wolf or something. If you're gonna draw here, werewolf seems like the card to do it with, other than warlord. Or you know, you invest in hideouts first and get your coppers cleaned, and then blacksmith is more than fine. Then blacksmith is brilliant. Five cards, incredible. I think you would. Yeah, I mean, you would want to play with it here. Okay, go get the forge. Collection. Collection. No.
yeah, it's pretty hard to justify the collection going back into action buying, right? As in, uh, as you're fixing to go into your turn sixteen shuffle as the money player. T shuffle here switches the order of the warlord on the battle plan. Probably realize what happened last time. Forge has very little to do here. You could get a platinum though. Yeah, you could. You could also do like two silvers in a collection into a colony. Well, that's not how I wanted the platinum. I wanted the silvers going. <laughs> I'd imagine. Yeah, that would be that would be better. See, Sibylla gave them too much time. By playing around with all these other cards. Yeah. Yeah, not angling for the province pile and then you know, Warlord and Battle Plan and Archer are just good enough cards that getting to play with them more is really good. I don't think you forge into colony here, right? I don't think you play the forge at all. Uh, no, probably not. I don't think there's any combination of things that you want. Other than just buy, I mean, maybe just buy, buy a platinum, probably. Okay. Just try and buy colonies, because Sybil is going to have a very difficult time uh, buying colonies. All right, the Millie colony, fine. Okay, second platinum. Bandit can trash platinum, right? I think so, right? Yeah, just other than copper. Some of the big reasons why it's so much better than uh, Thief. Is that the yes. original card? That is the original card. Yeah, what a, what a card that didn't quite work out. <laughs> yeah, Thief was garbage. Yeah, it was real. It's like bottom of the dumpster tier. Yeah. I'm glad he went back through some of the expansions and curated it even further. Oh, yeah, the second editions are great. They definitely changed the game a little bit to make it. Boards are a lot stronger on average, but that's fine. <laughs> it's better to have useful cards than, you know, all these cards that you would just make the kingdom smaller basically when you saw them yeah yeah you want 10 good choices in front of you at minimum yeah it usually more like 12 or 13 these days i know Hold on. see that's the problem with starting early for me there was there was only 10 for most of the most of the game so i practiced on reading 10 cards at that time but then they started to put the long cards at the side and sometimes my vision stops and i don't see the new cards <laughs> I, I definitely miss i definitely miss the horizontal cards from time to time especially when i'm just playing like lots of ladder matches it's like oh yeah. <laughs> oh wait there's this here oh it's a triumph board i should probably you know yeah play you try to it. find a way to maybe maybe play for it from like turn 10 you'd first noticed it yeah so that's something i have to train myself to do one thing i was particularly ignorant of was the ways all of the ways ways of the total ways of the all i just for some reason my mind would just skip over those entirely yeah i definitely had that happen a lot when i was like starting to get back into dominion because i was just like I played casually, but very casually and, and very 
infrequently for years. And then I just start, started getting back into it like four months ago, three, four months ago, something like that. And uh, yeah, there's just there's so much going on in every kingdom like relative to what it used to be. Yeah. I really had to be like, like almost relearn how to do my board reads to like actually see everything. Yeah, no, I, I, I am in the process of doing that. Hi, the blacksmith. Yep. Hmm, gets rid of the forge, interestingly. Do you think you'd want to toss oh, the probably uh, the village? Maybe a battle plan, because they don't need the second terminal. Although, if you toss a village, then they can't play the forge. Maybe. Probably. Yeah. yeah. Because this way, they could potentially just draw back into the forge, because you left them with plus cards in hand. Pretty sizable points lead for Sibylla, although it won't be after this turn, and Tisha of Steck remains quite a bit better, but it's it's going to be close at the end, I think. Yeah, but I expect Tisha to pull it off with the better deck control and the forge, just to be honest. Yeah, that gives them the flexibility where Sibylla can only really buy provinces and the points leads already way, way down to not that much. Yeah. Yeah, take the province. Hope they get another province hand here. Which they do, yeah. which is which is really good for them. Even farmland here, farmland in the province. Yeah, I think it would be time to farm land here. Okay, colony, right? Or farm land in the colony? No, just colony. Yep, just colony. And now we're seeing <laughs> a bunch of really good turns there. Oi, oh, blacksmith on, trust, no. some, lots of good stuff. Yeah, clear farmland. I think time, but uh, I don't. I don't think Sibylla is uh, playing with the farmlands. All right, take the estate then. Okay, good. So Tchef needs to hit colony twice before twice. Sibylla yeah. picks up that last province. Oh, colony then province, something like that. Right, right. That would work too. Five is what, Duchy? Yeah, I think so. They have the territories as well, so the Duchy's uh, five points, I think. Yeah, they have a farmland. Uh, six have... points. All right, they have estates as well, yeah. I think they have three territories, so the Duchy would be, would be six points, I'm pretty sure. Uh, what? <laughs> what is this sabotage uh, behavior? What? <laughs> I think it's a museum board. I... <laughs> uh, that's interesting. <laughs> I, don't... I... I don't know. I don't know why Curse was bought. Oh, fat finger. 
how fat is your finger? Why are you even considering anything in that region? <laughs> oh, that's... Yeah, I don't know that I buy the fat finger. <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> I think I accidentally buy a curse. I mean, I, I get it as like a mental mistake. Uh, but if I fat finger by a curse, I'm going to ask for an undo. Okay, here's trouble. Here's the blacksmith. Where's the collection? Here's the collection. Here's the forge. Do they have it? Uh, don't. Well, they can just buy. I don't think they have it. Did they have it? Reveals their hand. Did yes. they when they had? Did yeah, when they had battle plan collection in hand, they had it right. They could have forged those. Yeah. Forge into the province, and then they had money left over for a duchy. Sure, that would have done it. They could have even bought territory. Okay, so at this point, they probably are thinking that they cannot buy the province. Which they can't. So they would buy a territory and an estate then? Yeah, I think that's what they'd have to do. Yeah, because you can't ask for the undo after the battle plan play. No, you can't go back that far. Yeah. So territory it needed to... worth... I guess it doesn't matter, right? Last Province wins. Yeah, Last Province wins. Territory would be worth five, I think. Or no, six, because they have... They have everything they need. So the territory is plenty of points. Uh, yeah. But the issue is, right, they need to end the game. Although Sybil is not going to end the game on their turn. No, but they also don't know that. Um, there's another platform right. lurking. I don't know. With all this information, it looks good for T-Shuff. That's an unfortunate draw for Sybil. Though. Their deck is better than that. Yeah, I mean, it is and it isn't. Like, it's it's definitely an unfortunate draw. that you'll have You'll have some of those in this type of deck. Sybilla says I couldn't figure out your strategy. <laughs> it's the fat fingers, that's why. To confuse you. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, the curse was not not easy to explain. Other than, you know, mist, mist click. You know, actually, it wouldn't work still, right? Because their first player was going to say if they had not bought the curse, they would be equal on points, but they would lose on first player. Mm. Yeah, they get the sailor coming in. I mean, I think they just need to take, take territory here. Certainly taking their time to, to think about it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you can't do anything if Sibylla has province anyway, you know? Right. So there's no point playing around something you can't help. Yeah, I think the territory is clear. The only question is, do you take the state, but which I think is also clear because the chances that you shuffle back around to it are really low. Yeah, so there's the territory. And there's province. That's game. That's game, indeed. That's and Sybilla would have had it yeah. <laughs> with a different draw. Yeah, yeah. They, they stalled twice. Two turns where they, all they could do is take um, 2vp for baths. Yep. 
All right. Five one for for T Shuff. Games are fairly close. Um, most of them. Yeah. It was nice to see some um money versus engine boards. Cheers to all watching and commentating. T Shuff, send some bears for the commentators. Thanks, um, Brapwit for commentating with me. Yeah, thank you. It's fun. Yeah. We'll see how much of these um future matches we could do again for this season. Yeah, yeah, maybe uh you know the Friday night slot is a little bit a little bit tough to get 